delay indeed is not a denial. After nine years of trial, a former member of the House of Representatives, Farouk Lawal, was <clears throat> Lawal has been sentenced to seven years in prison by a high court in Abuja for receiving a five hundred thousand dollar bribe. This was when Lawal was serving as the Hard Hoc Committee Chairman on Investigation Fraud of Fuel Subsidy in twenty. 12. He took the bribe to remove Ote Dollar's oil, companies, um, oil company from the list of firms indicted of fraud and in fuel subsidy regime. Let's take you back to that audio recording that sparked the controversy. Oh, yes, I don't want to bring it to my house. Okay, you take it to your house? No, I don't want to bring it to my house. It's a lot of money. Uh, yes, so where? Because I am rushing to the, the, the airport now. Yeah, the airport in the aircraft. And before they can come over now, unless I send somebody to the airport, I was coming, I can't, by the time they come, I should be in the chambers. I have a lot of things to do myself. Is there anybody you trust I can give it to? Or, you, or maybe I should yeah. just, or maybe I should postpone my turn out to tomorrow. No, no, it's okay. I would arrange with someone. I would, uh, let me give you his number. Okay. Yeah. That was the conversation between Lawan and Altedola. So, Tuesday's sentencing of Lawan is a clear case of the will of justice immigrating slowly but moves assuredly. Lawan was found guilty of a three count charge of corruption and bribery and will serve a jail term of seven years. <laughs>
We presented a report. Farouk Lawan was the chairman of House Ad Hoc Committee on Petroleum Subsidy Regime in 2012. He was brought before Justice Angela Otaluka of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, seated in Apo, Abuja, by the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission on behalf of the federal government. The former lawmaker was a four term member of the House of Representatives who represented Bagua Shalono Federal Constituency of Kano State between 1999 and 2015. He allegedly demanded a sum of $3 million for himself from the chairman of Zeno Petroleum and Gas Limited, Femi Otedola. He also allegedly collected $620,000 out of the amount with a view to removing Mr. Tedela's companies from the list of firms indicted by the Ad Hoc Committee for allegedly abusing the first subsidy regime in 2012. Prosecuting counsel Adegboiga Womolo in the course of the trial noted the bribe was demanded by Mr. Lawan. Trial Judge Justice Otaluka found the former representative guilty in the three count charge brought against him. She sentenced the convict to seven year term in prison on counts one and two of the charge and five years on count three. The judge also ordered the convict to make restitution of the sum of $500,000 he collected from Mr. Tadela to the coffers of the federal government. It's very clear we are clearly dissatisfied with the judgment delivered by the court um, for very serious legal issues uh, and there is no doubt that we are appealing the judgment in, a, in every respect. We are going to the Court of Appeal and uh, we there's the option constitutionally open to us and we are going to explore it to the fullest right away. The sentence of seven years and five years on the different count charge are to roll concurrently. Celestina Iria, TVC News, Abuja. Femi Atadala actually got a mark note from the SS, the SS guys. And then um, when the thing came up, when Lawas told him to go and bring $3 million, he played along and reported to the authority. So they gave him a mark note. And in Lawas' defense in court, Lawas was saying that he wanted to ascertain if Otedola will really bribe him so that mm. we expose Otedola to the public. That was his own defense. And he was meant to bring two other uh, defense to help his claim, but he couldn't produce them, which the judge actually pointed this out. It took seven years. I mean, it took nine years. But Lawa is in serious trouble now. Yes, he is, Ayo. And... Um like we rarely noted, you know, um, at the beginning of the program, um, the wheel of justice grinds very slowly, mm. but it surely, you know, takes you to the point where justice, you know, is, is delivered. Um, Lawan's case, uh, they, they used to call him Mr. Integrity. I don't know if he's still there mm. as uh, that mm. type of Mr. Head of the Integrity Movement. The yes. House of Representatives, yes. so former House Committee Chairman on Education. It, it, it's, it's so sad that Mr. Integrity himself, you know, uh, collapsed at the weight of evidence, overwhelming evidence. Mm. You know, for those of us who um, watch the legal space, you know, very closely, sometimes as laymen we ask ourselves, I mean, if we had overwhelming, com uh, overwhelming evidence, why did it drag, you know, um, uh, seven years mm. to, to get him you know, to face justice. But that is neither here nor there. The, the fact of the matter is he's been found guilty, but that's not the end of the case. Um, his legal team says that they will they're appeal. They're not satisfied. Yeah, they're not satisfied, and they will appeal. And what that also means is that if he doesn't believe that he has, that he has received justice at the level of the appeal court, he will also probably, you know, proceed to the Supreme, to the Supreme court. court. I would like to see how that plays out. But, you know, the entire saga reminds us of um, how corrupt, you know, our system is, you know, it's like opening, you know, a can of worms, you know, um, for those uh, who had forgotten anything about that, about that incident, between 2029 and 20, 20 no, 2009 and 2011, mm. you know, um, 
the first subsidy issue, you know, reared its head, and it was in, it was a matter of national discourse. In fact, the record says about six point eight billion dollars, yeah. you know, were, were fraudulently, you know, siphoned from mm. from the cover of this country, and um, it 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 all boiled down to to issue of abuse, you know, records not being kept straight. We were told at that point in time, yeah, we're told at that point in time that about, yeah, that about 59 million liters of fuel were being consumed in Nigeria, mm -hmm. whereas indeed records, you know, available records, the facts, you know, proved uh, that it wasn't indeed that about that. portfolio billion, yes, yes that, just had people that about signing documents. Yeah, 35 million liters dollars. were being consumed, but authorities, um, those who were very close to the NPC, were claiming um, 59 million liters, and the difference, you know, was, mm -hmm. by, was being shared by those in the authority. But like I said, it's a long, it's mm. a long, it's a long case. Look at there. You will hear of oversight functions. You will hear of House Committee Chairman on this, House Committee Chairman on that. And apologies to uh, uh, my friends in the National Assembly, but the truth of the matter is that we have a fair idea of what goes on when you say you are oversighting, even as at the state as assembly level mm. and everything we know now. So, you were in charge of a panel to prove those people who were involved in the force of subsidy rackets. And Zenon Oil at that time, according to Femi Otedola, was not even involved. But to say, to remove his name, he needed $3 million. It shows the modus operandi of, I don't want to generalize, maybe the way it used to be. to be the way we run this country. The oversight committees, the members, what they generally do, which you are, I think, I hope, I thought you were going to be more explicit. They actually go, it's almost as if they go there with their own kind of must go, mm -hmm. so that uh, they don't really check anything. All they do is they expect that they are going to be entertained. And when I say entertained, they expect money to go with them, you know. Mm. And I think that is essentially what it's all about. You have dealers in the in government generally, not just the legislative, legislative arm. You also have dealers even in, ex in the executive branch, you know. So this doesn't really surprise me, and I'm sure you are not surprised. But I want to say something that uh, I thought our legal system in Nigeria says the onus to prove anybody guilty is on the prosecution, even to prove beyond reasonable doubt. Now, if we are reversing the Anglo-Saxon judicial system that we are using in Nigeria, and we are, it appears to me that we seem to want to be adopting the French, which says you are guilty until you prove yourself innocent. Whereas our system says you are innocent, innocent until, until prove you prove yourself guilty. guilty. And it is the onus is on the prosecution to prove beyond reasonable doubt. And then for the judge, I'm not a lawyer, for, for the judge to be telling um, Lawan that, well, it's your responsibility to provide your witness. Something tells me that something is wrong somewhere. There. I'm not a lawyer, but I, I, I'm not convinced. When do you get what is reading the judgment? Yeah. Most of the time, it talks about the pitfalls of your case. I understand that. that. Meant to produce I understand that, but for to now hook witnesses. your decision on that. If you don't I'm, produce I'm, your witness, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. Don't, I'm worried about that. If you say somebody who supports you in court, yes, and. <laughs> you didn't fire the people. You didn't bring if the you people. Yeah, there are no team. witnesses. Eh? There are no witnesses. Mm. I understand. It will affect your mm. case. I it would have said, oh, you didn't prov provide your witness mm. and ended it. But to now go beyond and begin to make it look as safe, he has the onus is on him. Ah, uh, uh, Mr. Shadda, maybe I, think, I, think I covered judiciary for more than eight years. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes think, even the judge will go as far as <laughs> we got lampooning the lawyer you know, that prosecuted the case. You know, that look, you, you know, did I, a shoddy job. I, there's a popular <laughs> saying that the law is an ass. You, mm. you could have a good case, fantastic case, if yeah. you argue it badly 
you lose. Yes. So there are no sentiments. Yes. It's, a, it's about and the judge the evidence, will point it out. The that evidence before you bungled this case. Yeah, the evidence before before the before the courts. But you see what what drives this entire issue home is have we learned any lessons? Hmm. And my answer is is no. What has radically changed? I, when I spoke earlier, I talked about claims that about 59 million liters of fuel were being consumed daily, whereas mm. in actual fact, it was about 35. I just read up an article on my way here, and in April, the Nigerian government, through its agency, the NNPC, is claiming that 93 million liters have been consumed. It's, mm. it's, 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 it's impossible. And mm. the subsidy system, Ayo, has not been stopped. Mm. Do you understand? The Petroleum Equalization Fund is still there. It's still a form of subsidy. People are reaping from it, and we are pretending. And Nigerians need to be reminded that the man who sits at top of the petroleum industry is Mr. President himself. There are lots of anomalies that we need to address. Mm. The, the, the minister under Jonathan, I don't know if that has changed, was a member of the board of NNPC. At the same time, she was presiding or supervising the PPPRA. Mm. 